Hey there, how's it going? And we're back for episode number two of Doki Doki Literature Club. <sighs> okay, let's just get right into it, right? We left off, we were about to read Natsuki's poem, so she's my least favorite person so far, so we're going to do that. I'm clicking A and nothing happened. I, I saved some screenshots, though. Hello, Natsuki. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Polars. If you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. This sh I wrote a poem. Everybody likes it, though. What? Harsh. What? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not e very good, but yeah, I did put out in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Hmm. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So did so. Uh, so you did. I guess more went into that than I realized. That's what it me means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew, I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I really didn't come out nice at all. What is my dog doing? He's freaking out. He's up. Oh, whatever. Um, well... I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Polars did too. So based on that, I'd gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. 
and Polar's like my poem too, you know. And he even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, eh? That's not what I... Ooh. You, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Polar's appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I wouldn't deliberately go... Jeez, dude. He's deliberately walking around the carpet to make more noise. You just did a full lap around the carpet. A full lap. And you sniffed your butt. There he goes. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Polar started showing up. Oh, I like where this is going. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls, girls tor turn towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Polars. She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have to have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Polars. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Polars? Um, well, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whomever, whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. Uh, we're going with Yuri. I don't care. I don't like that. Little, little girl there. Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri. Hey. You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I'm sorry. Ooh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well. And we just told her how you... F and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you... Don't you think you should too? Hmm. Natsuki clenched her fists. In fact, clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped. At this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Sure don't. Um... Sometimes when I'm hurt... It helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hand and throws it in the trash. Natsuki, she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. Sigh. Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right. I believe you. Thanks, Polars. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. Her, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, 
Huh? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm going to make some tea. The thing about her boobs getting bigger, probably. Uh, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? I think a mosquito bit me. A mosquito bit my wrist. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Polars. How about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. Oof, it was a neat thing to talk. Uh, neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Shit. And maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job uh, impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Pullers, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Eh, eh, eh. Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, what about what happened earlier? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Polars, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's eh, eh, eh. Every day is going to be so much fun. Sigh. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Do do do. Alright, so now we're on this here. I need to take a quick little breather, but yeah, let's do this. Let's try to impress Yuri. Alright here. Let's see. I need to use the mouse again for this one. All right, so it's not necessarily dark stuff. It's, it was um, eternity. Yeah. It's stuff that is epic, like destiny, ha. Um, viscous, I don't know, prom lollipop insight. Yeah, look at me go, I've gotten this, I'm getting it figured out. Um, passion, tragedy? I think she was more kind of dark, a little bit. Passion, variants, explode. Passion, ambient. Yes! Um, adventure. Ah, oh, damn it. Existence, that sounds like something that would be all about her, yeah. Uh, lust, maybe, massacre, incapable, yes, uh, depression, anime, together, alone, unrestra unrestrained, maybe, together, I like unrestrained, yes, I'm good at this, um, infinite seems about her, agonizing seems more her, infinite, infinite, um, fear, damn it, uncontrollable, starscape, despise, desire, uh, sensation, extreme, candy, poof, blanket, uh, charm, um, vibrant, question, precious, precious, vibrant seems about right. Uh, wow, I, it's like I understand this girl. Uh, clumsy, hop, hop, essence, essence, uh, universe, uh, philosophy, horror. Frightening, intellectual. Ah, damn it! Got that last one wrong. 
I think I did pretty good. I got most of her, like mostly. All right, another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. Move the mouse here. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. <coughs> Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, pullers. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Eh. 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 I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Hey, That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Hey, Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. <coughs> then she returns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Wow! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Huh? I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Polish to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough for retribution. Ah, that I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Ooh, ah ha ha. I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You're right. You were right, though. I did something bad, and I have to accept the... Revolution? Seems like an odd word. There it is. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? Heh. 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 Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, what? what was that? Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was, eh? A cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is it a miracle? <laughs> Had a sneeze there, huh? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. Oh, I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Ah! 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 You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours is looking really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Eh! 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 Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. 
I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her sh off of her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously just do that? Uh huh. Mouthful. Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Hey. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica, anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's prob She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Hey, you don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh. eh, eh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Um, well, my last period stud today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't where you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Polars. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case... Best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Hey. Ah. I suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. <coughs> uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Eh? We're just, Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's the, that's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell you there's something wrong with helping involve... Wait, with helping involve pullers in club activities? Hey, Oh. My mouth gapes. I... Suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. <laughs> then let's go, pullers. Ah. Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. 
I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Polars. How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because I want to do you. I mean, nothing that you do is bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say. Um, Yuri lifts her head. Polars, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Polars. Do you like oolong tea? No, I don't. Ah, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now, it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Oh, God. I'm tired. Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Hoo, hoo, hoo. In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. I feel like I have no sound. Oh, that's right. I ended up, uh... Hold on. I ended up turning down the music. Uh, I was getting a little too loud. There, that's better. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Polars. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Polars, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? I do, actually. I have a very bad back and that would uh, not be good for me. Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. Well, it's not on mine. Didn't you hear what I said? I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's mostly like, most likely because my, uh, my, your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Uh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. I don't know if it will, but... Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our side. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer and her shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was also so... Oof. Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Dot, dot, dot. After a few minutes, I manage to 
I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumbled with a chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's, that's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. And just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me. <laughs> That's actually funny. Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Polars? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't even avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah, uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! Oh, uh, uh, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share palms. Paulers, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Dude, major boner killer. Way to go, Monica. Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, of course, Yuri. She my girl. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. Yuri stares at the poem with surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Polars. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never, you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself, and besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends. Dot dot dot. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you... Holy shit. Okay. Ooh, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. 
my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Hold on. There was a, a mosquito. I got him. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. Okay. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my motion on the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. That's actually kind of a cool poem. I like that. I mean, it's not literally about a raccoon. It's just talking about a... Um, our pleasures, you know, our, our, the raccoon is our, maybe a guilty pleasure or just our pleasure. So the knife and the bread or the bread, you know, the knife is the tool to get to that. So I don't know, imagine, you know, smoking a cigarette or something, you know, so, cause you're, you're, she's the raccoon or the raccoon's the, the desire. Sure, not bad. I like it. Not bad, lady. I'll give you an A. I'll give you an A. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I am usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Polars. Well, thank you. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now, I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's, it's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Old Monica. Hi again, Polars. Uh, how's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. This feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, 
it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her, eh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Oh, Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but, well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me! The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, and piercing. Red, green, and blue. An endless... I hate this word... Cacophony. I don't remember. Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, and piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing on a chalk playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like a playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. I hate this poem. Load me. I don't like your poem. I don't. There we go. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. I don't. No, I never said that. Yeah, I did. It's just a kind of thing i never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be, an, uh, be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Sayori. <sighs> Ooh, I like this one, Polars. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Still, though, your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. Uh, eh, eh, I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Well... Don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know, I wouldn't lie to you, Polars. Never ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um, well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, uh, you, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once, a while, once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a little bit, or a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy, 
endings that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? Is it? It is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Polars. I should go write that down, then you can read my poem now. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Bottles. I pop off my sc scalp? Really? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in the room. My collection makes me a lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after, ooh, night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and dim deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them down from the shelf one after the other, holding them out each to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. The hell? I, I don't even, I don't even know. Holy crap. That's what I was thinking, dude. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect like something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. You should be proud of it. Ah, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Don't get ahead of yourself. Siori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this one is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Natsuki. You're the last one. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Eh? What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother to write poems like this until you're at Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. Don't tell me. You're, what's your, uh, you're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? I mean, I am. I really am. What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know, Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I, I mean, ooh, looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. 
Take your stupid poem. If you order for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. It's true. Oh, I don't even get to read her poem? That sucks. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. God. <sighs> That's concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. Oops. Uh, we're going to be performing. Performing. Pit. Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Eh! 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 Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a ba that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room for the people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and resetting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get o get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. 
More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is this some, simply a natural? Oh, she's, I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense ex expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Did I say that again? Uh, the four of us applaud. Monica takes a deep breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. What you doing there, buddy? You're being very loud. You're being very loud. Go click your way over to the carpet. Uh, that was very good, Monica. Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. Oh, I thought that... Okay. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Wait, never mind. Uh, and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Siori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Ah. Ah, sorry, I giggled. Eh, 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 eh. Siori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem is aimlessly cheery, like Siori is, or isn't, sorry. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Siori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Siori finishes, and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Siori. Eh, eh, eh. Even Polars liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Siori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you very nicely, really nicely. But it might be better, might, but it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle deliver, delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Eh, eh, eh. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hm. Don't make me go before Polars. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Polars lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. 
I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone, uh, as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. <sighs> yeah, maybe. All right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, Why are y'all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... <clears throat> well, I guess in that case, you won't have much time to worry about the festival, or worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's it, what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamph pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, and I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siori and Manic Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh, eh, eh. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Polars. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than the usual on the way home. Alright, that's where we're stopping this episode, though. I wish I was getting a little bit further, but this episode's already getting long, so... I'm still not seeing any potential for horror or this, you know, yeah, so, I could see it changing the eye, I played Everlasting Summer, I mean, that game took a, a really, really dark turn later, I mean, especially if you paid the, like, one Pioneer story, Pioneer story, so, we'll see what happens, I can see this going pretty dark, so, but we'll see, uh, so far, it's still fine, uh, I'm enjoying it, so hopefully you are too, but that'll do it for this episode, uh, I will... See you on the next one. Have a good one.